It's Ronnie, and welcome to a Punched Out Thursday to Die For. That's where we'll all be using our punches and our dies to create our layout. And it is also Christy's Beautiful Life, 30 Days of Sketches, Round 9. And if you'd like to post your take on the sketch, use hashtag 30DSCBL9 on Instagram, or just post it in the Facebook group. This is a sketch we'll be using today, and it was custom made for the hop. And it was created by Sean Styles Lar. And yeah, double page layout. <laughs> Y'all know it's been so long since I did them, and I thought we were done for the month, <laughs> but apparently not. Here is another one. And I am going to do a little bit of punch art here first before I do anything else with my layout. I'm using that punch. And I think it's called Build a Flower. It's by Stampin' Up! And it is discontinued. And this is the largest petal. And I'm customizing it by cutting out fingers. I'm going to make a baseball mitt because my layout's going to be baseball themed. And I'm trying to make them long enough and with enough of a gap that you can tell they're fingers instead of a petal. And I'm have them trim it up just a little bit and I'm checking to see if it's going to fit. I put the glue on there and then I think, oh, I did not put the ink on there. So I'm going to have to go back and ink it. I use craft card stock for this part and then just a dark brown scrap that I had for the other part. And I'm just going to layer the two together. I'm kind of trimming the back one a little bit to fit and then I'm going to cut a chunk out like I did for the thumb and go around the thumb and then not have the shadow on the bottom part. I was looking at the ones on the internet because you know I've had a mitt my own mitt before <laughs> and used it and played ball of course but you know who sits there and looks at them? I mean, you know in your head what they look like and you can recognize them. But if you're going to make one, you might need to look at some photos. I am, I punched out half of, well not half a ring, partial ring of that circle. And then I did some slivers. And I am going to make that part between the thumb and the index finger that catch helps catch the ball. And I'm going to put three strips across there. Two are going to be the darker brown. And then the third one, the one on the top, is going to have the craft card stock and the brown. And I am inking them as I go. And I am just going to bridge them across the two areas to make it look like a mitt. That's, that's my goal, to make it look like a mitt. Now, I know mitts are generally laced with strips of leather, but I'm going to use some... Uh, embroidery cloth instead and I'm putting little X well I'm putting little holes in there right now not X's but they're going to be X's when I get done with the stitches and they're going to connect the fingers with the X's and then I'm doing just a straight st stitch down the side and then on around the bottom and up to the thumb it's going to be I'm not sure what that stitch is called I first thought blanket stitch, but no, it's not because you do a little hook thing and it's not a blanket stitch. But uh, I'm just looping it around there. I'm going to call it a loop stitch. I may be way off bounds on that for sure because I don't even think I've ever heard of a loop stitch. But that's what I'm doing with it. This is one thing I did decide I needed to make a sample to start with. Let me give you a hint here. <laughs> Don't get your holes too close to the edge. I did that on the first one, but I repaired it. I just used glue and glued it back together on those little teeny tiny spots and pushed the thread in and it, and it looks fine. There it is. It looks fine <laughs> as long as you don't get too close and examine it too much. I made myself a template with a little bit of erasing. I'm not going to say a whole lot because... I have erased more when I made a template, but I made a bat and I might have made it just a little bit too big for my mitt, but I left it. I thought, 
I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. If I try to trim it down, I might get it off. And it looks like a bat at the moment, so I'm just going to leave it. It looked to me kind of like on the sketch, the background was black instead of white. So I decided I'd go ahead and go with that because their shirts are orange with black writing and numbers. And I thought, that'll go with it really good anyway. So I can just pull some orange out that I think matches the orange. And my layout will be good to go. I had these two strips left over of the film strip. And I took so many photos that day that I decided to go ahead and make them tiny and put them in the strips. So I did make the photos, made them tiny and put them in the strips. I did that off camera because it did take a little while. It's not like they actually fit when I went to just throw them on there. I had to do them one at a time. But they're on there and there's lots of different photos in there. And there's still more. I did not print every photo I had from that day out. The photo over to the left has a circle behind it, and I decided to make it a baseball. So I took a pencil and used that template, the cutting template from the Creative Memories, and made my circles there And with a pencil. Well, it's colored pencil, but I knew I could use an eraser with it if need be. And I am putting holes in there so I can do stitches like on a baseball. And I had a scrap of red thread. And I thought, oh, I, I hope this is enough. It was barely enough. But I am just putting them through there and not doing a super good job of it. <laughs> this would be a do as I say, not as I do. Well, I think I would take my stitches in the opposite direction. I do the one on the left is what I do and I'd start back just a little farther on the first one uh, well I would leave that first one off and start back on the on the other one instead of having a hole there I would just bring the little v-shape back a little more here I thought I would do like you know you'd see those baseball signs and it'd have like maybe red then white then blue and I thought well I could do some layering on here well, I laid that play over there, and I thought, boy, it's really showing up good on the black. I think I will just go ahead and leave it with the black. And then I thought, I'll cut out more letters and just do the letters on there. And then I thought, no, I, what, when would I use this play ball again? Well, I might because, you know, I have more photos. But uh, I just decided to glue them down the way they were. And I didn't put them super straight. Because I thought everything else on here is so straight. So I do have that big baseball right there. And I'm going to put like a baseball field looking thing down here in the left hand corner. And I'm going to put my little diamond thing on there. And I had a piece of gingham paper laying in that tray. Y'all might have seen it. It's green and white. I planned on using it. If I had another scrap, I would have cut me another one. But I couldn't find it, and I thought, I could sit here all day hunting for it, no telling where it went. So I just cut a solid color green. I would have really liked the plaid, though. And I took my one-quarter inch punch and punched out the edges. I cut the circle. If you seen me line it up, it was like for a three-inch square. And then I cut this at one and a half inches. So there would be plenty of field on the other side of it. And I know baseball plates are, you know, square. But I made them circles on here just because I wanted to use circles instead. They were easier. I would have had a hard time getting all the squares the same size. I have no little tiny square punch. I wasn't sure what to do with these photos over here to the right-hand side. <laughs> I just left them for a little while and worked on the left hand side and i finally decided I'd just go ahead and put the ones on the right up in the corner and there is an arrow well there might be more than one let me look yeah there is a couple of arrows on the layout so i thought well i'll pull out my arrow punch and use it and that one picture there, it's my son, and it says dad and number one, and he's one of the coaches. 
anyway uh i thought well i like that shirt i'm gonna make sure it's on there so i made it small and i'm gonna put the arrow and then on the photo you might have noticed me putting the arrow tiny arrow on it well i actually managed to catch the ball in the air after she hit it and i wanted to point it out i don't want anybody looking at the layout and not seeing it because you know that's pretty cool that she hit it and yeah, because she's pretty small and did a good job. Well, they both ended up hitting the ball. I just wasn't good enough to catch Charlie's. But instead of talking about the photos, I'll talk about the layout. The arrows are a Stampin' Up! die, and it's old discontinued one. And then I'm going to put some stars on here and use my EK Success Punch. So while I'm doing all that, I want to mention that down there below... <laughs> is the links to everybody that's doing a punched out thursday to die for and there's links for everybody for christy's beautiful life now christy's beautiful life may not have everybody doing it on on this day <laughs> but some of them actually are doing it every single day and some are playing catch up even so if they don't have it that day keep looking back if it's a sketch you're interested in one of the get as many ideas as you can about it keep checking back and look in the facebook group all kinds of ideas will be going in there people from facebook that do not do youtube videos or instagram will be posting in there but uh let's see where i'm at on the layout oh my stars <laughs> i started to put the orange and then I thought well you know I think I'd like some white on there since I am using some white on the layout so I'm adding a few white ones in there and then I will be done with it um, yeah and today is day 17 St. Patrick's Day so happy St. Patrick's Day I did plan on doing a St. Patrick's layout until I realized it was this double one with all these photos and I, I thought I had not got that many St. Patrick's Day photos. I think all my St. Patrick's Day photos are singles. So that's why you all just got a happy St. Patrick's Day. But you did get a two-page layout. So that's a plus. Um, but there's the two, layout, two layouts, the two sides together. And this is the left-hand side. And I really did try to put that other mitt on the other side. But I just couldn't find where it'd go. And I, I, I would be happy with it. And that one arrow does look crooked, don't it? I'm going to have to straighten that. But uh, I did put it, use ATG so I could straighten it easy if I got it crooked. But there's my bat and my mitt. And, uh, yeah, made with the um, Stampin' Up! Flower Builder. Punch. I think I think that's what it's called. It is discontinued. And there's my first one that I made. Nope, nope. That is the second one I made that you all watch me make because the stitches are farther from the edge. So if y'all make one, make it farther from the edge. Take my word for it. Farther from the edge is much better. <laughs> But if you leave a comment down there below, I'll try to get back with you. And if you like the video and hit a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. If you are not subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. And those of you already are, thank you so much. But check out the Punched Out Thursday gals and see what they created today with their punches and or dies. And check out the Punched Out Thursday to Die For Facebook group too. And see what everybody else has created with their punches and their dies. Plus, the Christie's Beautiful Life 30 Days of Sketches. Try one of the sketches and post it in the Facebook group. Just have fun. Bye.